think I should repeat okay, what I can you repeat. said. Uh, Tillier okay. was asking that mechanized farming is uh, like the better okay. option, but because uh, we are overpopulated oh. and the resources are not uh, readily available, how, how does this reflect uh, back and we're trying to get a situation where we have an agrarian society that is sustained, you know, by uh, the workings of agriculture. If I'm right, that's what you were trying to ask. Or I was saying that now he is saying that the country is overpopulated. Okay. But I think that we have okay. the strength, especially in the Oh, okay. Okay, what he's trying to say still remains is, is uh, with the area, our the area of China, can't we turn times. that challenge into uh, a solution, a strength, with, uh, you know, the high uh, population going more into farming, since things like mechanized farming are too expensive for everybody to have. Can't, uh, how can you churn out these large numbers we have? into a reasonable workforce for uh, agricultural purposes. Thank you. I understand you now. I was given a fact prior to this time. The fact is that Africa has three times the area of China landmass. Africa in population is 1.3 why in China we have 1.4 billion inhabitants, over 9.6 million kilometers square. So, in a situation where you are comparing it, you realize that the China has a population in, in comparison with the land mass Africa. Yet, there is no food scarcity in China. It just boils down to the fact that, number one, there needs to be reorientation of Africans, majorly Africans, as it concerns us, because we are used to practicing in subsistence form of farming prior to this time. While in those developed countries, from the outset, they have been practicing mechanization in farming. And so, what efforts a person will do in Africa just one person make the same effort in triple in a Western world. So here is what we need to do to help us get this right. Government have to start with reorientation of the teaming population, especially the fresh graduate, because every year all universities turn out their graduates. And all of them come into the labor market of the assuming that, oh, why should I go to the farm? when I have spent four years, five years in school. Whereas, it's not everybody that should be on the farm. Sometimes you can just be there to supervise. Sometimes you might just be there to operate machines. So, all the people that are, uh, that, that, that are graduates of agriculture are not on the farms. All of them need an office environment, which is giving us big problem. And don't forget, everybody must feed. As long as all of us must feed, there's going to be a problem. Take, for instance, in this country now, we have bread that's about to flour. About two, three days, not sold. And it's available for eating. If this is the case in the Western world, you will eat a, a big bread, oven fresh. And that's the power of technology. So you understand that, oh, we need these people to be on the farm, but not to till the soil directly. Government should make it easier and attractive, these agricultural practices and the, the food chain supply. It should make it very attractive and reduce everything that concerns the import duty and the stress in importing all these farm machineries such that every farm will be self-reliant on its own and at the same time will be able to feed the teeming population that are in the commerce in the We have to, to understand this fact and face it squarely, starvation will ravage Africa.
That is the reason my organization came up with this concept that, oh, once for all, all for each, that if every one of us can have our individual quota in form of cooperative, agile youths, professors, ideologists, experienced personnel in the farming sector, definitely it will be very, very easy for us to take over Africa in terms of food supply and food satisfaction. Thank you. All right. So uh, going on that, I'd like to ask, what is the projection uh, for getting one, let's say Nigeria, one particular state, let's, uh, any state, I'm not uh, mentioning any particular state, or several other states to feed, to become a point to feed the nation and probably do some importing exclusively. Is there a possibility of that ever working out? Let's say your own state and uh, two or three adjoining states, all they'll do is become slowly, uh, solely agrarian and uh, contribute towards feeding the nation. Yes, thank you very much for this wonderful question. If there's any question at all, it has always been the major thing on our mind. We have six states, including the federal capital territory. Let's assume that the federal capital territory is uh, uh, the territory where our policies are made, but every other state is yearning for this. Believe you me, look at Lagos, for example, that's why far it is the commercial hub of the nation. The truth still remains that we have land here in Lagos. But Agri has a large expanse of land because if you look at Lagos, all the boundaries towards the state, all of them are supposed farmlands. Every state can move to this land where we will be self-sufficient in agriculture. Mind you, agriculture is not just about farming. We have fishery. Those in the riverine area, I'm talking about the river state, the Bayelsa state, um, and the, the, the power of Delta state, all these areas that are not 100% land, they can as well practice fishery. Why? In a two place like Lagos, we still have fish uh, farm. And uh, the one that the Lagos State uh, government set up, we have uh, what they call it, uh, animal husbandry. Every even around the Kurudu in Mota, we have the pig farm. In Atodugu, we have the fish farm. We, at Agege, we have a whole lot of them. And Badagri as well. But the truth is, the population in Lagos State will never, never solely depend on the products from Lagos because the population is small. Let's consider the north. In the north, they are getting their beer gradually because bulk of what we eat comes from the north. And it's because of government so We may not be having adequate rainfall in the north like we're having in the south. That is the reason you find out the part that the Fulanese, they are into animal husbandry. So you just choose what is suitable for your own state and go ahead and massively produce. If the government can get it right by supporting these people, of course, there are programs, but they are not enough. When you look at the programs that turned out by the well, by, by the uh, federal government through a uh, national microfinance bank, the CBN arm, yes, they are massive, but believe you me, not enough because we are just getting it right gradually, and enough is not apportioned to agriculture in the budget. If the budget is taking almost about, uh, I mean, the, the budget for agriculture and the agricultural uh, food supply, the chain, if it is taking as much as 40 to 50 percent, definitely we are getting somewhere. Because at that point, you find out that everybody that is named the farmer will not be running farming as a law. Because there will always be a subsidy like we're having in the, uh, the petroleum industry, we're having subsidy for, for fuel, we're having subsidy for, for the, uh, other petroleum products. We are expected to be having continuous subsidy in agriculture.
This is the only way. I repeat again, this is the only way. It will be easier for individual states to be self-sustained. This is possible. Believe you me, this is very possible because we have some underpopulated states that are having a very massive land mass. Take for instance, Oshun states. Oshun not with much population, but we have massive and crazy land. The bulk of their land have been earmarked for educational purposes already. Churches are there. Camps are there. Farmlands are not so many. But the ones that you find there, they are not mechanized. And this is not good for this part of, of the country. And we have many of them that we can name on and on. But the only way out is if subsistence farming can be transformed to mechanized farming in such a way that the latest of innovations in terms of machinery can be imported by the government and be given on franchise to these farming enthusiasts. And then we can be talking about food sufficiency, uh, sufficiency at state at different levels. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Desmond, uh, recently the federal government displayed in Abuja rice pyramids. What we knew before was uh, I mean, uh, Granite pyramids. And that to me was an indication that we can provide food enough for the country. Yet, our graduate, like you mentioned, those who studied agriculture, running away from agriculture, looking for white collar jobs in the offices. Is it not time enough for them to understand that we can be good and exporting our food to meet the economic situation we have? What advice would you give to those who read Agric in the universities that it is high time they returned to agriculture and the proper form that they studied? That's a question. Honestly, we can't be talking about food sufficiency without the technical know-how. Professors and the universities, take for instance, the University of Agriculture, Abeokuta, we have a whole lot of them having their different portions to farm because they have enough land mass in the state to cater for this, even when it is um, relatively massive, but it's not enough because bulk of what we're talking about is not just for our own consumption alone, it's for the populace that are not part of industry. And at the same time, looking beyond to export out of the country. Now, come back up to, to your question or your suggestion, so to speak. These are our graduates. Their paradigms need to be shifted from being in the office and understanding that, oh, I need to be in the farm. I'm not talking about telling the story. But when you take personal interest, it's not that you are going to school because you, uh, I mean, you, it's not that you are going to stop because that's the only option that is left for you, or probably because Germ did not offer you something else. No. See it as a passionate thing that, oh, it's either this or nothing else. If that, there is a paradigm shift, they are psychic, they are understanding, shift as regards this. Orientation is there, government is encouraging through finances. You can imagine in Kenya, bulk of what is done in their society, which is a relatively agrarian, is by cooperatives supported by the government. Government is having just about 40% share, while the populace uh, as cooperative are having about 60%. So that is the reason Agri uh, African Youth Agricultural Cooperative came up. In such a way that, oh, when we, because um, IAC, as the acronym is, is for Africa. It's a way of recovering our land back from ignorance, back from poverty, back from this ravaged enigma that is ravaging us in Africa. And you can imagine an, uh, an average African wants to run out of the country to the Western world because there are structures in place. I want you to know that it is important that we put our structure in place. Yeah, the government can be trying, but it's not enough because when you look at the population of birth rates on annual basis, it is not commensurate with the food that we are supplying. Hence, we are depending on importation. Of, and this is supposed not to be so. 
Look at uh, the, 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 the rice mill at Imota in Nikorodu, in Lagos State. That rice mill that is about to be completed is the biggest in Africa. It simply means that this rice mill can accommodate all the countries of Africa while they are processing their food, that's the, the rice in, in Lagos here, and we are having the privilege of selling ourselves, marketing ourselves out, consider our father rice. I want to go into this and do it crazily, I mean passionately. See, their life depends on it. All we we'll always believe in is, please, I'm interested in the agri business. Let the farmers go to the bed and the produce and let us buy and resell. And this will not help us if we are not changing our paradigm, if we are not changing our orientation. I read once again to the government that government should make a lot of attractive packages for farmers. If these packages are very, very attractive and mouth watering, just like we have in the money market, just like you have in, uh, in, in the government sector too, that is uh, the, in, in the political terrain, in such a way that every time they can hurry wants to rule. If Greek is given such priority, believe you me, even this youth that you are looking at that are, uh, that, that, that are graduates of a Greek, none of them will want to go to the office. Every one of them will want to be in the farm. Just because it's an aberration for an engineer to be found in the office. Their work is always on the site. Engineers are not running away from the site. So why should a Greek graduates be running away from the farm? It's because we don't have adequate structure and well attractive packages in place. Please, I'm using this opportunity to talk to our government to encourage the youth because the youth owns the future of a country. If the youth can be encouraged massively, I'm talking about massive encouragement. The, the encouragement is not just about talk. We're talking about funds, available funds. If there is adequate, then we are getting there gradually. Thank you. And are, are you saying that uh, it is the government's turn now to look into adding more impetus to what they are doing, like you mentioned, infrastructure, agricultural implements and then monetizing the, the system so that they can have soft loans to go for agri. Now, if all that is done, it simply means those agri graduates will remain at home like you just mentioned. So is it the fault of the government or the fault of the students or the graduates coming in or the fault of the farmers not being able to get involved totally in agriculture because they don't have the requirement that they can compete with other worlds that you just mentioned? Yeah, you have uh, taken it from another dimension. All of them are in beats. Every arm that you have made mention of have their own faults and at the same time have their responsibilities. I'll start with um, the practical situation on the farmland. Can you imagine that uh, while on the farmland, we don't have our graduate that have the expertise that have gone to study this in the university, coming to the farm to help us do some passing technical work. We just have to take them on, uh, uh, well, I say, on, on part-time business as on consultation business, because we don't have enough fund to employ them fully. So they have to start consultation from one farm to another. Take, for instance, the veterinary medicine, uh, uh, medical doctors. All those vet medical doctors, they can't stay in the place, but nothing stops a big firm from employing them on full time. That, uh, we are talking about like the, the supervisory role. We have to go from Nigeria to countries like Benin Republic, to countries like Togo, to get some people that will come to the farm and be staying there. Whereas we have a lot of our youth that are just wasting on the streets. It's just because, and that is one, if you look at it critically, you realize that, oh, the farm owner does not have much power in terms of finances to help out. Now, consider the second part, the, uh, the, the illiteracy, permit me to use that word, the literacy of 
the unlettered that have been practicing, practicing critically, government is about both. Documentations, documentations before you can apply for any or assess any funding. And this people, they feel this disenfranchised, they feel cut away from government assistance. That's why they are still there. They understanding, they have the technical ability, but these people are aged, even when they are not lettered hundred percently. People find it difficult to do documentation to assess government funding, to enlarge their own firms. So people like this are to be breached. Gap needs to be breached. There should be a kind of a bridge in between them and the government. We at IAC Nigeria, we are trying our little best by bringing these people together, both the educated, the semi-literate, and the illiterate. We're bringing them together, bridging them through common crowdfunding to expand, then leverage on their efforts, bringing it and exposing it to the outer world that this is what these people are capable of doing under proper supervision. Because I have the business of bringing in the expertise of those that have gone to school for it and those that are not lettered so that all of them can be at par. Because in cooperative, nobody's a leader. Everybody has the same voice, one vote, based on the policy that has been laid down by the government on the last part the government. Government should deal with the grassroots farmers more. Now, giving them orientation from time to time, making them understand what planting season is, what can be planted, and giving them this mentorship all through without any reservation. Government is about becoming one. Or maybe as government is changing, the policies also are changing. You know, government is political and it's just about four years. And after four years, another lot, maybe eight years. What about the farmer? The farmer remains. So if this government has the understanding of, oh, we want to attract these farmers, and the next one that is coming does not understand it that way and is not seeing it as parity. To be problem. Every policy that is permanently to encourage farmers. Please, you will not see anybody not in Thai being in the office that read a Greek. You will see everybody on the farm willing to do this, not just for themselves alone, but in foreign exchange. And this is exactly what we are talking about. Thank you. All right. Thank you there, Desmond. Uh, please, you, we are still on with you, but we're going to take a short break and we'll come back and we'll conclude this topic. Stay tuned out there.